Hello and welcome to Pastors Library. My name is Stephen Redman. This is the channel where we discuss everything to do with theological study books and um, we think about those things that might be on your reading list for a master's or bachelor's degree uh, or a seminary course or of course they may also just be books that have turned up on your pastor's bookshelf, your minister's bookshelf and that we just discuss how they might impact uh, your development and um, uh, what, what, how you uh, interpret the Bible to others. So uh, if you like what we have to say please give us a thumbs up on YouTube and also please click on subscribe and click on the bell and that way you'll be amongst the first to know when we issue another um, episode of Pastor's Library. Today I want to talk about journals. When I went back to um, Bible College to do my master's degree, um, I was told at the time, um, read lots and lots of books, but read journals above anything else. And I went straight to the library and checked out a journal that looked interesting. And I sat there with it in front of me and I just thought I was going to faint. I thought that it seemed so academic, so technical, how was I ever going to adjust to this? Uh, but I persisted over sort of a three to four month period. And at the end of that three or four months, I found myself subscribing to a couple of journals, which I still maintain my subscriptions to. And I have to say, I've added a couple since then. The trouble with journals is that you, um, you get a, maybe a modest amount of, of paper, uh, printed paper, um, and you maybe get two a year, you could potentially get up to four a year, and they are usually quite expensive. I mean, some of these, if you just look at the cost of what you're paying for the book, you may be paying 40 or 50 pounds per issue. Um, in some cases, even more than that. And so you do have to be very thoughtful. It's great if you've got an online subscription through a Bible college or seminary or university because you can access most of these things whilst you're there and you can get online. And that's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. But if you're paying for that uh, as a standalone uh, student afterwards, uh, that can be a, a ridiculously expensive. And the truth is that uh, these are aimed at the um, theology student uh, at degree or post-degree level. And they are really pitched much more to institutions than they are to private individuals. So personally, I, am, I currently work on having four active subscriptions. And I do that with support from my local church. But um, when I see uh, a, a one I'm interested in, maybe one of my daughters might treat me to a year's subscription for my birthday or something like that. So you get to try out um, a journal to see if it suits you. Now, obviously, ones that have to do perhaps with the New Testament or or, or the Old Testament may be obvious choices and, and they can be absolutely excellent. But whether they are the actual ones that will help you in your ministry, um, either as a student or as a pastor, as a minister, whatever it is you do, uh, you have to sort of weigh that up. And I'm at a point where my library is um, almost sufficient for my needs in terms of volumes. Um, I am quite happy with what I've got and I haven't really got much more room to store anything else. Uh, but um, journals fit in somewhere easily and they always keep you up to date. And I, I would suggest to you, this is the real virtue of journals. You get cutting edge research. These are papers that are peer reviewed, that come out uh, from people who are active now and they may quote everybody going back in history but they will give you a view 
on the latest position. So I'm going to just show you a few journals. Uh, they may not be the ones that you would pick, but they're the ones that I have picked over time. The ones that I, um, I um, subscribe to at the moment are Numa, which is um, really the chief Pentecostal uh, com, um, journal. Uh, it's the one which, if you've had an article published in it, uh, you can pat yourself on the back a bit because it, it is quite an excellent uh, Brill uh, publication. Um, and um, this is, a, is the most expensive that I get. And I, I can't remember now, but I think it's, it's, it maybe works out as £60 uh, twice a year uh, for this, which I, I think is expensive. Um, and particularly as last year, uh, one, uh, one journal uh, focused purely on a conference, uh, which I didn't find very interesting. And so I ended up paying about £120 that year for what I felt was one uh, journal that was really good. Uh, uh, to be fair, um, it really was good. So I think things like that you've got to take into account. So this is the, um, an example of the Journal of the European Pentecostal Theolog Theological Association. Uh, this is one I've, the one I've subscribed to the longest, which is probably because I knew the secretary um, of the um, association. And this has a great range of articles aimed at the Pentecostal community, excellent for the charismatic community, for the um, new, new church community. Uh, that's a very good one. Um, it's one of the cheapest ones out there. Again, it's two copies a year, um, and I, I thoroughly commend that one to you. Um, probably the one that I would say I consistently get the most from is the Journal of Pentecostal Theology. Now, this again is um, one which is not too badly priced, and for two copies a year, um, and it's a Brill publication, Brill publications are always erring on the right side of things. Um, I think it's a good one. Uh, so um, you will get people on the cutting edge of theology submitting articles, like I say, that are peer reviewed, and um, it's good. Uh, for example, recently in one of these, there was an article on um, uh, similarities and differences between Catholics and Pentecostals over the breaking of bread. And I got so much out of that. Um, and one point that the author was making was that um, uh, of all people, you would expect Pentecostals to involve the Holy Spirit in their traditions. Uh, but the, the, the author was saying he couldn't remember being in a Pentecostal church where anyone had stood up and, and prayed for the Holy Spirit to um, make Jesus uh, real to us as we were um, breaking bread together and um, uh, what he said was in, in the Catholic liturgy that's there and um, it challenged me a bit so it's it, I've modified my practice so on a Sunday morning now when we break bread together uh, I will always pray that the Holy Spirit will help us see Jesus and meet Jesus at his table and um, you know that's a simple thing but it's it was presented in an academic style, an academic way. There was no way you couldn't follow up the argument and see where he was coming from on it. Uh, but its positive application uh, has impacted my life. So I think um, reading journals is much more than scratching a, a brain cell. It's much more to do with application and um, helping yourself uh, in uh, this field. Now, um, I was a, um, a subscriber to the Journal of Biblical and Pneumatological Research, except I think after five years, this one went bust, which is a shame because, again, it had top quality um, authors like Roger Stromstad, um, and um, it was really excellent input. Uh, but I've got five years of that on my shelf, which will, I will always refer to, and it's still good. 
One that I think is remarkable uh, for its um, positive cost is one that is edited by Craig Keener and um, is uh, the Society for um, the Gospels and Acts Research. And this is the journal of the Gospels and Acts Research. And this only comes out once a year, every September. And you can order this through Amazon. And um, if you're a Prime member, that of course means you get it delivered for free. And this is something which I personally find very helpful. Again, top theologians represented in this. An absolutely excellent area that we can all engage with the Gospels and Acts, can't we? And um, I find this one absolutely brilliant. Typically, pay about £20 a year for that, which I think is incredibly competitive. So um, I uh, certainly commend that one to anyone. Here's one which I don't want you to be offended by. This is the Catholic Biblical Quarterly. Now, it says Catholic on it. It's published, I think, through by the Catholic Universities of America or something like that. But it, this has input from Protestant and Catholic. And I have to say to you, this is brilliant value for money. And over the years, I have probably had a greater application in my own life from this journal than any other. Um, it is really excellent. Um, it's also got a wide range of book reviews. And of course, book reviews help us because it's like trying a car out before you buy it. You get to know what someone else's view of a book is before you even have to invest on the cost of it. So the Catholic B Biblical Quarterly, I think it's something like 60 odd pounds a year for um, a printed copy and access to the website. Um, I think it's only 40 odd pounds just for the printed copy a year. And wait for it, there are four a year. Absolutely brilliant value for money. So uh, don't please be put off if you are, have an allergy to Catholics. I personally don't have that allergy and I find this journal to be top notch. Uh, over the years, some of our best um, theologians uh, of all time have had work printed in this and this has been going a very long time. Um, this year I'm trying out the journal for the study of the New Testament uh, because one of my daughters has blessed me with a subscription um, and this is good, it really is good. Um, lots of uh, subjects covered in it all to do with modern study of the New Testament and um, we have to really uh, always be looking what theologians are saying today. In the last 60 years has revolutionised our access to early documents. We know more about the New Testament now than we ever did. Our understanding through archaeology, through the study of culture of that time, the context of the scriptures, we know far more uh, than probably anybody other than the early church Christians knew. And uh, thank God that we're catching up with where we were. But uh, this is a worthwhile one. Not sure if I'm going to renew my subscription yet, but it's definitely up there with, with some of the others. It's a good, good one. And over the years, ones that I have subscribed to and I've let the subscription lapse, uh, probably the one that I often regret letting it lapse is Novum Testamentum. Uh, which is an international quarterly for New Testament and related studies. Um, and this is, is good. And again, you'll get people putting in here uh, an article which is really excellent. And they go on to uh, write a very popular book, which you think, I'm sure I've read what they've said before. And you find that you read them in Novum Testament. Um, I also have used have tried the Tyndale Bulletin uh, again you know it, it's it's good it, the thing with with all journals is you get people submitting their work to them until they find one that may publish 
Um, I think there are a few people who will always get their articles published. Um, and Tyndale have a lot to offer. Um, and biblical interpretation I also found helpful. Um, and it's, a, it's subtitled the Journal of Contemporary Approaches. And um, again, uh, this is, um, I think this one may be four times a year, but those are the types of journal that you can access um, even when you're at home. Um, what I would say to you is, is that I've sort of taken the view that if I'm going to spend, say, £80 on a journal subscription for a year, I have to think of that as part of my book spend. And um, all I would say is, I think in general, spending on journals is probably more important than spending on um, traditional hardbacks, paperbacks, simply because of the calibre of work that you're getting access to. And um, it's really good. Now, you may be a person who is not got the Pentecostal bit in their uh, uh, bodies that I have, and you may say, well, I'm not really interested in some of those. But all of these out journals have something to offer. And there are quite a few more than I've mentioned to you. Um, I suppose the Journal for Pentecostal Studies uh, is, is one that I really have to recommend probably above any other. The Catholic Biblical Quarterly, I would say, is the other one. And in terms of value for money, the Catholic Biblical Quarterly is the one to beat. Uh, the Journal for the Study of the Gospels and Acts is definitely the other one to beat for value for money. And it's only out once a year and it always has something excellent in it. So that's where I am with journals. And um, what I would say to you is, is whoever you are, whatever you're studying, um, you should really dip into journals. Uh, incidentally, I've spent a lot of time looking through eBay for used journals, and I very, very rarely ever find any, uh, which to my mind means that um, they're either going into landfill or staying in people's libraries. And, and I think that that is um, uh, an issue. You, you will struggle to find them on, on, in the second-hand market unless you happen to go into a shop where someone has just donated a load or something like that. Uh, but I think you, if you do that, uh, it's, it's a good opportunity to just say, I'll take the box uh, because uh, there is always something good in the journal market. So I hope that's helped you. I hope that's uh, maybe guided you a little bit in your thinking. Uh, if it has, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and to also uh, click on the bell and that way you'll know as soon as we publish our next Pastors Library. God bless you. Bye.